Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler, teaching electromagnetics. In this series of videos, we are going to derive the wave equation for the electric field and the magnetic field. But first, in order to do that, let's derive Maxwell's equations in the phasor domain for the time harmonic field. So first, let's start with the electric field, and let's take a look at this, and we can see that it could have x, y, and z components, as well as a time-varying component. Now, in a cosine form, this would Co uh, omega t would be that time varying component and this other part would be some spatial variation that we could have. Now what we should realize is that if our electric field looks like this and it has a frequency component then it's very likely that the other fields that we might deal with so the magnetic field, currents, etc would also have that same omega t variation. So we should assume that both the electric field density and then the magnetic field components would also have that same frequency variation component if, if they're very closely related or in that same system. So this means that we should call these time harmonic fields. So this means that the electric field and the magnetic field have the same omega t, the same frequency variation component, and they could be considered a time harmonic field. Now, because of those are time harmonic fields, that means that we want to reduce the complexity of our solution by removing that omega t component while we're dealing with our equations and instead write these fields in the phasor form. And so in the phasor form, it's going to look like this. And this is very similar to what we did when we started with the 1D traveling wave, where we had 1D traveling waves and we said, let's reduce that by making them look like phasors. Let's get rid of that omega component when we're dealing with them. Okay, now our notation here is, be very careful here, is we're going to call the instantaneous form, so this is the one that has x, y, z plus a t. That one looks like a capital E with a arrow on top, but the phasor form has a tilde. If you're using another book or you crack open another electromagnetics text, often the instantaneous form may have these fancy scripts for the instantaneous field, and they may use this E and H for the phasers. But for us, if you're using this Ulibi textbook or in my class, we're going to use this E with the arrow for instantaneous, and our phaser is going to have a tilde on top of it. So now let's make one more assumption, which is that our fields are going to be linear and isotropic. This is a common assumption for undergraduates. Really, you have to start dealing with some kind of exotic materials in order for this to be invalid. Now, after using this assumption, let's get started and derive those Maxwell's equations. First, let's start with Gauss's law. You can see this is the instantaneous form, and we say that the divergence of the electric field density is equal to this charge density. Now we pull this out, right? We said that our fields are going to be linear and isotropic. That's where this comes from. And then we can get to this final expression for Gauss's law. Now, if we want to convert this into phasor form, um, realize that that just means that this left hand side contains all of the electric field components in space plus that uh, component in time. And if we anticipate that our magnetic field and so on is going to have that same omega t variation, then we can just reduce it to a phasor form where we actually are going to just substitute this phasor E field uh, for this instantaneous one. And so we can take the phasor form of Gauss's law to look like the divergence of the phasor electric field is equal to the charge density divided by epsilon. Okay, so now once we've done that, let's go to Faraday's law. Now Faraday's law is a little bit more complicated. It has this derivative. Now remember from before, we have a lot of special properties in the phasor domain and derivatives become j omega in the phasor domain. If this is unfamiliar, then I'm going to link a video up here to review those phasor properties. But we can, uh, one of the beauties of phasors is that we can replace the derivative with the j omega. Now, Gauss's law for magnetism, right, we've just substituted in our linear isotropic condition. We know that the divergence of that is zero. Therefore, in phasor domain, we just have the divergence of the phasor magnetic field is zero. Ampere's law, very similar to Faraday's law. Um, but again, we have this uh, time de derivative. 
and we know oops, that that time derivative uh, can be turned into a uh, j omega. And so these are Maxwell's equations in the phasor domain. Thank you, and I will see you in the next video.